Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our inaugural meeting of council, uh, your 2018 council. This is my last official duty, is to open the meeting uh, this evening so that we can get uh, the swearing in of our new council members done for the next term. So with that, I would like to turn the uh, rest of the meeting over to our MC, Bruce Williams, and they declare this meeting officially open. Thank you, Carol, and thank you, Carol, for everything. Standing room only, look at this. Colwood's into it. Good for you for coming out here to show your spirit for your community and your interest in what goes on here. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Lekwungen-speaking people and the Songhees Nation. We are here to embark on the next steps forward in the history of this remarkable community and this region and you, its citizens. Steps are being taken with respect for all who have come before us and those who will be with us in every step forward in the next generation for residents of this region. At that point, we're going to get very patriotic and ask you to stand once again and rise for the singing of O Canada by the Dunsmuir Middle School Choir. They're going to come in from the back right there. Uh, these are some grade six and seven students. They get up at the crack of dawn twice a week to go in and practice and warm up so they can sing for you in places like this. They rehearse at 7.30 in the morning. Other people singing at 7.30 are in the shower, but they do it because they're so dedicated. They're under the direction of Mr. Fabian Duque Park. It's their first performance of the year. They're very excited to be here. Uh, we would ask, though, that you refrain from taking pictures during this particular part of the program. They'll be back a little bit later on, and there'll be other photo ops for you. So, O Canada. Thank you. Please be seated. Uh, we're going to get right underway with this right here. We're going to have the inauguration process begin as new council members take their oath of office. Gerald Loster is a barrister, solicitor, notary public, Colwood business owner. He will come forward to administer the oaths, beginning with, the last time we get to say this, Mayor-elect Rob Martin. So, Gerald, please come forward and we'll get things underway. Yes, there it is, perfect. Ladies and gentlemen, as a brief background to the reason why we're here today, I'd like to read and refer to a statute of the province of British Columbia. It's called the Community Charter Act. Section six of that Community Charter Act says this. A municipality is a corporation of the residents of its area. The governing body of a municipality is its council. Section 114 says that the members of a municipal council are the mayor and the councillors. And section 116 says that the mayor is the head and the chief executive officer of the municipality. And finally, section 120 says a person elected or appointed to an office on a council must make an oath or solemn affirmation of office within the following applicable time limit. And that, um, in the case of persons being elected by voting, 
is 45 days after the election. And so we're here tonight within that 45 day period to swear in each and all of the members of council. We're going to deal with the chief executive officer holding the position of mayor, which is Robert Martin. You're hiding. Would you state your full name, please? Robert Henry Martin. Mr. Martin, do you swear? I'm, I'm sorry, would you please repeat after me, Mr. Martin? I, Robert Martin, I, Robert Martin do swear as mayor for the city of Colwood that I am qualified to hold the office of mayor to which I have been elected. And I have not by myself or any other person Knowingly contravened the local government act. Knowingly contravened the local government act. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. In relation to my election to the office of mayor. In relation to my election to the office of mayor. And I will, as required by the community charter. And I will, as required by the community charter. Disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. Disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. Pecuniary interest. <laughs> no one ever gets that right. I will, I will disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. I disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary. It means money. I have in a matter. And will not participate in the discussions of matters. And will not participate in the discussion of the matters. And will not vote in respect of the matter. And will not vote in respect of the matter. And I will perform the duties of the office of mayor faithfully. And perform the duties of the office of mayor faithfully. And with integrity. And with integrity. And will not allow any private interest. And will not allow any private interest. To influence my conduct in public matters. Public matters. public matters and I will abide by the statutes bylaws and policies that govern the city and will promote openness accountability and responsible leadership and I will dedicate myself at all times to acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Colwood And I will promote, st provide stewardship of the public assets, and provide stewardship of the public assets through the development and evaluation, through the development and evaluation of, the city's policies and programs. of the city's policies and programs. And finally, I will always consider the well-being and interest of the community as a whole, leading to the development of a safe, vibrant, sustainable city. Take the Bible to your right hand. Do you solemnly declare that the statements that you just made are true and correct? I do. Thank you. We're going to sign this here. Next, we'll start with the councillors who will be assisting the mayor, the new mayor, uh, Michael Baxter.
Could you please state your full name? And would you repeat the oath of office after me, please? I, Michael Baxter, do solemnly confirm as counselor for the city of Colwood that I am qualified to hold the office of counselor to which I have been elected. I have not by myself or, er or any other person knowingly contravened the local government act with respect to vote buying or intimidation in relation to my election to the office of counselor. I will, as required by the community charter, disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. I may have in a matter and will not participate in the discussion of the matter and will not vote in respect of the matter. And I will perform the duties of the Office of Counselor faithfully and with integrity and will not allow any private interest to influence my conduct in public matters. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city and will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. I will dedicate myself at all times to acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Colwood. I will provide stewardship of the public assets through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. And finally, I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole, leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. And Michael Baxter, do you so solemnly affirm? We have Cynthia Day. Would you please state your full name? Cynthia Day. And please repeat the oath of office after me. I, Cynthia Day, do solemnly affirm. I, Cynthia Day, do solemnly affirm. As counsel for the city of Colwood that I am qualified to hold the office of counselor to which I have been elected. I have not by myself or any other person knowingly contravened the local government act with respect to vote buying or intimidation in relation to my election to the office of counselor. I will, as required by the community charter, disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest I have in a matter and will not participate in the discussion of the matter and will not vote in respect of the matter. I will perform the duties of the office of counselor faithfully and with integrity, and with integrity 
and will not allow any private interest to influence my conduct in public matters. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city and will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. I will dedicate myself at all times to acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Colville. I will provide stewardship of the public assets to the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. And finally, I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. And Cynthia Day, do you so solemnly affirm? So far, so good with pecuniary. <laughs> Dean Jansen, please. <laughs> JK. <laughs> JK. <laughs> I just do what I'm told. <laughs> you take the Bible in your right hand. Thank you. And would you state your full name? Would you speak louder, please? Dean Kendall Jansen. Thank you. Please repeat the oath of office after me. I, Dean Jansen, do, so do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. I, Dean Jansen, do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. <laughs> And I have not by myself or any, or any other person. And I have not by myself or any other person. Knowingly contravened the local government act. Knowingly contravened the local government act. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. In relation to my election to the office of counselor. In relation to my elect election to the office of counselor. I will, as required by the community charter. I will, as required by the community charter, disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest, disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest <laughs> I have in a matter, I have in a matter, and will not participate in the discussion of that matter, and will not participate in the discussion of that matter, and will not vote in respect of the matter, and will not vote in respect of the matter. And I will perform the duties of the office of counselor faithfully. I will perform the duties of the office of counselor faithfully and with integrity and with integrity and will not allow any private interest and will not allow any private interest to influence my conduct in public matters to influence my conduct in public matters I will abide by the statutes bylaws and policies I will abide by the statutes bylaws and policies that govern the city that govern the city and will promote openness accountability and responsible leadership and will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. I will dedicate myself at all times. I will dedicate myself at all times to acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Colwood. To acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Colwood. I will provide stewardship of the public assets. I will provide stewardship, stewardship of the public assets. 
through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. Through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. And finally, that it always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Do you swear to contain or change that express your knowledge? I do so swear. Douglas Norman Kobayashi. Please repeat the oath after me. I, Douglas Kobayashi. I, Douglas Kobayashi. Do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. Do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. That I have been elected. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. And I have not by myself or any other person and I have not by myself or any other person knowingly contravened the local government act knowingly contravened the local government act with respect to vote buying or intimidation with respect to vote buying or intimidation in relation to my election to the office of counselor in relation to my election to the office of counselor I will as required by the community charter I will as required by the community charter disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest Disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. I have in a matter. I have in a matter. And will not participate in the discussion of the matter. And will not participate in the discussion of the matter. And will not vote in respect of the matter. And will not vote in respect of the matter. I will perform the duties of the Office of Counselor faithfully. And perform the duties of the Office of Counselor faithfully. And with integrity. And with integrity. And will not allow any private interest and will not allow any private interest to influence my conduct in public matters. To influence my conduct in public matters. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city. And will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. And will promote openness, accountability, and, account and responsible leadership. I will dedicate myself at all times I will dedicate myself at all times to acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Colwood. To acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Colwood. I will promote stewardship of the public assets. I will promote stewardship of the public assets through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. Through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. And finally, I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Do you solemnly swear that the statements contained I do, I do are swear. true and accurate? I do swear.
Please state your full name. Kenneth Gordon Daniel Logan. Thank you. Please follow with me for the oath of office. I, Gordy Logan. I, Gordy Logan. Do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. Do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. I have not by myself or any other person. I have not by myself or any other person. Knowingly. Knowingly. Contravene the local government act. Contravene the local government act. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. In relation to my election to the office of counselor. In relation to my election to the office of counselor. I will as required by the community charter. I will as required by the community charter. Disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. Disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. <laughs> I have in a matter. I have in a matter. And will not participate in the discussion of the matter. And will not participate in the discussion of the matter. And will not vote in respect of the matter. And will not vote in respect of the matter. I will perform the duties of the Office of Counselor faithfully. I will perform the duties of the Office of Counselor faithfully. And with integrity. And with integrity. And will not allow any private interest. And will not allow any private interest. To influence my conduct in public matters. To influence my conduct in public matters. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city. And will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. And will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. I will dedicate myself at all times. I will dedicate myself at all times. To acting in the best interests of the residents. To acting in the best interests of the residents. Of the city of Colwood. Of the city of Colwood. I will provide stewardship of the public assets. I will provide stewardship of the public assets through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. Through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Do you swear that the statements contained are true and accurate? I do. be an opportunity for you to take photos of the entire council after Mr. Parkinson is sworn in, if you wish. Would you please state your full name? James Edward Stewart Parkinson. And please repeat the oath of office after me. I, Stuart Parkinson. I, Stuart Parkinson. Do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. Do swear as counselor for the city of Colwood. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. That I am qualified to hold the office of counselor. To which I have been elected. To which I have been elected. I have not by myself or any other person. I have not by myself or any other person. Knowingly contravened the local government act. Knowingly contravened the local government act. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. With respect to vote buying or intimidation. In relation to my election to the office of counselor. In relation to my election to the office of counselor. I will as required by the community charter. I will as required by the community charter. Disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. Disclose any direct or indirect pecuniary interest. I have in a matter. I have in a matter. And will not participate in the discussion of the matter. And will not participate in the discussion of the matter. And will not vote in respect of the matter. And will not vote in respect of the matter. I will perform the duties of the office of counselor faithfully. I will perform the duties of the office of counselor faithfully. And with integrity. And with integrity. And will not allow any private interest. And will not allow any private interest. To influence my conduct in public matters. To influence my conduct in public matters. 
I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city. I will abide by the statutes, bylaws, and policies that govern the city. And will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. And will promote openness, accountability, and responsible leadership. I will dedicate myself at all times. I will dedicate myself at all times. To acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Cullow. To acting in the best interests of the residents of the city of Cullow. I will provide stewardship of the public assets. I will provide stewardship of the public assets. Through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. Through the development and evaluation of the city's policies and programs. And finally, I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. I will always consider the well-being and interests of the community as a whole. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Leading the development of a safe, vibrant, and sustainable city. Do you swear the city will pursue the true objectives that you know? I do. So if you would like to take a photo opportunity right now, please come forward and do that. So that Ladies and gentlemen, if sure, you, we're finished uh, swearing the council. We're finished swearing the mayor and the council members. I would like you to welcome me in joining them all, your new mayor and your new council members for the city of Colwood for the next 2018-2020 term. This is so they'll get used to facing the media. That's what this is all about, you know. It's a very good thing. Depends why they're there to see you. And thank you all very much. If you could return to your seats, Council, thank you very much. We are going to take a musical break now. The Dunsmere Choir are going to come back, and they're going to do a song uh, called Yonder Come Day, which is a song about the start and a new beginning. So would you please welcome back the Dunsmere Choir.
Thank you. Dunsmuir Middle School Choir. Thank you so much. At this point, I have the honor of introducing Florence Dick, who will be here uh, to present some welcoming remarks and a blessing from the song He's Nation. Florence. Thank you. Welcome the new council and the new mayor. I just want to send my gratitude um, to all the parties sitting at the table. Um, our chief and council look forward to a new partnership, continuing partnership, um, opening the doors to our people. And I'm so grateful to be here to do a traditional welcome in our language. Osiem Nichelacha, Aikwans Kwana Hela, Aikwans in the Tachel, Eight Lulanata, Haishka Siem, and in the Tachel Tianuk. Wanna, to my friends, it's good to see you all. Welcome all to our homelands. Thank you, honored ones, for coming today. And I would just want to say this is an honor, and I can't recall coming this far out. We've never had boundary lines. A lot of people wonder and ask, what is Lekwungen? Lekwungen is one with two nations underneath, which is Songhees and Esquimalt. I am honored to be here, as it's our ancestors' lands that were here. And I tell people every day they're still here, this is their second walkthrough, as my name is over 200 years old. It's never rested. It's here, and it's going to continue on for my grandkids to carry that name. And it's an honor to see the youth being part of this, as you know, they are the ones that are going to eventually take over also. And that's what we hold in our community, is our youth and our elders because they are the ones that are going to be working for us in the future. So thank you for including them. And I look forward to the partnerships going forward. Florence, thank you. Well, we know about Dunsmuir Middle School. Colwood is home to five elementary schools, too. John Stubbs, David Cameron, Sangster, Crystal View, and Colwood Elementary. And, of course, one high school, which is Belmont, all a part of School District 62. Right now, I'd like to introduce Diana Seaton, a trustee representing School District 62 in the Board of Education, to say a few remarks. Diana. Good evening, everyone. 
It's a true pleasure and honor to be here this evening. On behalf of the Board of Education, I would like to extend greetings. Also, our uh, board chair, Ravi Parmar, is unable to attend this evening as he's in meetings in Vancouver. Also on behalf of the board, I would like to offer congratulations to Rob, our mayor, Rob Martin, Councillor Baxter, Dave, Kobayashi, Jansen, Dave, and Parkinson. Wonderful. <laughs> so glad, glad to see you here, and I'm so pleased that you were all elected. We plan uh, a lot of work to be done together and collaborate on many future projects. So over the years, uh, Souk School District has built a relationship with um, the city of Colwood, and we sincerely appreciate that. Uh, relationship. It has become very strong, it's positive and collaborative and we have much to do in the future. Um, evidence of this relationship is the building and opening of Royal Bay Secondary on time and on budget. Well done and we couldn't have done it without your help. We really truly appreciate that. Also, the Board of Education sincerely values the relationship that has been built between the two of us. So, in saying that, um, I'm hoping that we can have a meeting as soon as possible. <laughs> and if there's time tomorrow morning, <laughs> that would be wonderful. We have schools to build. Portables aren't an option. So we do have our work to do, and I'm truly looking forward to working with all of you and your staff. Thank you so much. So there's elementary, there's middle, there's secondary school here. It would only make sense at some point in education that you include Colwood in your post-secondary plans too. Royal Roads University, of course, is here. It brings positive international attention to this community through the many alumni who are active around the world after they've graduated from Royal Roads. They bring an immense benefit to economic development on Vancouver Island, and they're a key stakeholder in building a sustainable and prosperous Colwood economy. The city of Colwood collaborates regularly with the faculty and students at Royal Roads on key issues and initiatives on sustainability and on innovation. And of course, Royal Roads is one of the few post-secondary institutions anywhere in the world that is a bona fide tourist attraction. Hatley Castle and Hatley Gardens draw tourists from around the world. The beautiful campus grounds is an important connection to nature. It's a great place to take a selfie. It's a wonderful place to shoot a Hollywood movie. Royal Roads has got it going on. So it's my pleasure right now to introduce Colwood's only university president at Colwood's own university. Would you please welcome Dr. Alan Cahoon, the president and vice chancellor of Royal Roads University. Thank you, Bruce, that was quite an introduction. Uh, Mayor, congratulations on your election. Council members, um, again, congratulations for the work you've done and will have to do now to, for the next four years, I think it is. And Carol, thank you for the service that you gave as mayor. We appreciate the working relationship we've had with Colwood and we will continue to do that. Um, you're our neighbor. We sit in the middle of, of Colwood, and we've all, always appreciated that in terms of rural roads. Um, for us, <coughs> it's important to have a, a sense of place. And uh, I've described the, uh, the environment of rural roads as being a place where we actually, through the environment that we have, uh, can, can deliver the kind of education that we do deliver. And uh, it's a valuable for us to have that and we appreciate this opportunity. We appreciate the, the fact that we, we do um, have 565 old acres of an old growth forest and, and uh, um, heritage uh, facilities that we protect and uh, that, we are, that we share with, uh, with, with Colwood. I wanna thank the city of Colwood for gifting us uh, three indigenous murals uh, that are now 
located on the boathouse. If anybody's been to uh, the campus recently, we've just finished uh, the renovations on our boathouse and we've been able to put those three murals on the um, east side of the, the new boathouse facing the Ishinaquelum, which is our uh, Blue Heron house. Uh, it's, a, it's a very appropriate tribute because those were in, in uh, recognition of the, um, of, of the uh, um, discoveries that were made on the lagoon and so they're now back uh, on the lagoon and open to, uh, for people to be part of the educational process. As is Charlie's Trail, we've had a chance to go through that recently. We've now translated uh, some 10 species along the Charlie's Trail into the Kwangan language and you can hear what, they, what those words are if you want, if you start up by the castle. Um, as you know, it's an interesting time for, uh, for railroads as we work through the disposition of land um, by DND, and uh, that process involves uh, working with, uh, with Songhees and the Esquimalt with respect to the disposition of that lands. I can assure you that uh, we are having very positive discussions. Colwood, uh, Ian has been um, uh, working with us on the working committee and that process is, uh, is going well. It takes longer, I guess, dealing with government, certainly not the local level, hopefully, but, but certainly with the federal level. Uh, but I'm assured that uh, in the end, it will be a, a very positive resolution. We're also in the process of, um, of doing a, a, a case analysis on a West Shore satellite campus. Um, this is an opportunity for railroads along with Camosun and UVic to establish a, uh, a physical location on the West Shore which will um, be accessible to young people here. It's been one of the challenges that railroads has had being that we are primarily uh, a graduate university. 70% of our students are, are uh, graduate students. Uh, we only admitted students in year three. They had to go someplace else to, to start. So we haven't been very, very able to accept students uh, locally. That will be changing if this building proposal comes through. And we will actually have uh, a uniquely designed university in the sense that it will be designed by the community. And we're going through a consultation process with parents, with teachers, with counselors, uh, with local leaders, including um, inviting the mayor and council to a, a, f a session in which we will be talking about some of our ideas and plans shortly so that we can really get a sense of what is needed here as opposed to what we think you should have. So uh, this idea of an urban uh, campus in a downtown core in which uh, facilities already exist is helpful, reduces the cost, and, and makes us more relevant, if you like. Uh, we're also uh, finalizing a business case for a new learning and teaching auditorium for those that you know the campus. We've had a swimming pool that's been de decommissioned since before I came. Uh, the design would take that building and, and and renovate it and upgrade it and, uh, and do the kind of seismic and uh, structural upgrades that need to be done and create a 500 seat uh, teaching auditorium. That auditorium will be available then to this community as a place for forum, lectures, workshops, and maybe even occasional political debate. Um, we'll, we'll also be taking to the board this, uh, in, in December, some proposals with respect to residencies We've not created any, any residencies since the time of the, of the military, so there are 176 rooms that, uh, that uh, Doug Kobayashi, I'm sure, uh, trashed at, in an earlier life. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure that's not true. To, um, but uh, we will be looking at building a first of uh, a series of residences so that the idea of the, of the Hatley Park counts, uh, uh, campus will be that it will focus on the graduate education for people who come in for two or three weeks in short terms, but they're intensive during that period of time and we need accommodation so that they can, we can, we continue to grow. So those are new opportunities with respect to Royal Roads. We're delighted to be able to work with the new uh, council and we hope that that's very productive. Thank you everybody. Thank you, Alan. 
Colwood's got the best castle, by the way. There is that one downtown, but Colwood's <laughs> castle's way better than that. Um, the success and the vibrancy of the business in any community is dependent upon many things when people cooperate and work together and strategize. And one of the signs of true strength is a chamber of commerce. And you have a very, very strong chamber of commerce on the West Shore. Uh, I want to recognize Julie Lawler, who is in the room as well. She's the executive director of the West Shore Chamber, who is hiding. Right? No, she's right there. Julie is right there. Um, I'd like to welcome Mike Riley, who is the president of the West Shore Chamber of Commerce, to make a few remarks, too. Mike. Thank you, Bruce. That was good timing because my, uh, my Fitbit just said it was time to move. So I think I've cleared my bar just by walking over here. Um, I'm here to represent the pecuniary interests of the community. <laughs> and, uh, and thank you for, for the words about the chamber. It, it is a, uh, a strong and vibrant chamber, and uh, that's due in part to much of the collaboration between the, the five municipalities that make up the chamber. And uh, I wanted to thank our past council, and specifically uh, Mayor Hamilton, for, for her engagement. And I'm really looking forward to such continued engagement with uh, the new council. And uh, on a personal note, having been involved in, as a politically active person for many years, it's a real treat to finally have backed somebody that got elected. <laughs> I haven't always backed the right horse, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so this, this is really nice. I, I had some prepared remarks, but just listening to the oath of office, uh, it, it struck me that, that if the council members and, uh, and, and the mayor hold to their word of the oath of office, then, then we at the chamber don't have anything to be concerned about. Because specifically the words in openness and accountability, well, I would expect that from, from a city council who are engaged in helping develop a strong and and vibrant business community, uh, safe, vibrant, and sustainable communities. Well, that can only exist if you have places where people can work and homes that they can afford to live in. And stewardship of the public asset. Well, what we have are the people that live and, and work in this community. And if they have businesses that they can be proud of and employment opportunities, then we are going to be in just the right place. So. In closing, uh, I will ask that uh, we continue to, to work together collaboratively. Uh, the chamber remains open to participation with the city. And I would expect and hope to see all of you at our next mixer right after the AGM in November. And you, of course, you're all welcome to come to holidays at Hatley at the best castle in the city. So thank you very much, everyone, for coming out. And uh, good luck. Thanks, Mike. One of the things that makes any community a great place to live is the safety factor. And we are blessed, of course, here to be um, placing our safety in the hands of the world's most recognizable police force. Because there is no more famous police outfit or, out or uh, um, uniform in the world than the scarlet tunic of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. And the West Shore Mounties keep things under control and safe here. I'm going to call on Inspector Todd Preston, the officer in charge of the West Shore Detachment, to say a few words. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, good evening. Thank you for this opportunity. I, uh, I must say I'm really uh, thrilled that you uh, included the youth in this uh, procession here this, uh, this evening. Uh, I first want to thank outgoing uh, Mayor and Council, and especially Madam Mayor Hamilton, for her years of service and dedication. Thank you, Carol. Um, on behalf of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, and as the officer in charge of uh, West Shore Detachment, I want to welcome um, Mr. Mayor and Council, and uh, I thoroughly look forward to working with all of you uh, in the near future here, and keeping uh, your community safe. By the sounds of it, I better get to you uh, before the school council gets, uh, gets to you here. So, But uh, all joking aside, congratulations, and uh, very much uh, look forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now my pleasure to call upon His Worship the Mayor, Rob Martin. One of his first official duties as mayor will be... Uh, oh, you already did that. You already gave Florence the blanket. Good for you. I knew that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we wanted to make mention of the military that's present in this community, too. Colwood is honored to be home to many military families, and we fully acknowledge that the lifestyles and the freedoms we enjoy today are due to the many sacrifices made by our forces, personnel, and by their families. 
Royal Roads, of course, has a distinguished history as a military college, and uh, we have reminders of their presence every day. When we see the ships of the Royal Canadian Navy on our waters, we have reminders of our past at Fort Rod Hill, and of course that's something that's a part of our lives every day here on the West Shore too. Uh, now then, I'm going to again call on the mayor. No, I'm not. Hi. Um, gentleman from the Legion is going to come up and say a few words. <laughs> Which was not in my notes, but really glad to see you. Jim. How are you, Jim? Nice to see you. I must have left my notes in the copier because he just quoted everything I was about to say. Oh. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Honorable Mayor Martin, distinguished guests, Colwood councillors, and fellow Colwood citizens. Uh, I'm retired military, having served 22 years. I joined at age 17 in Toronto and uh, was a radio man out here beginning. Um, serving here in Esquimalt, I changed trades to a uh, physical education and recreation instructor and taught in basic training in Nova Scotia. Then back to Toronto for five years, which was lucky, and then back here. Finishing my last five years uh, as administration, and I retired in 1995. I wasn't an admiral, so I still had to work for 20 more years. <laughs> Aside from regular ship sailing earlier in my career, while well, posted to Esquimalt, in 87 I was posted to the Middle East, primarily uh, to the Golan Heights with the United Nations. And in 1992 I was uh, serving on board HMCS Restigouche, and we were the first ship to be sent to the Middle East, and we went to the Red Sea. Um, both deployments were six months in length. I was very lucky I did not have uh, any school-aged children to go through the, the primary problems, the middle school problems. I'm dating myself when I call it junior high. And then, the, uh, of course, the high school and the teenagers. Um, it's the entire families that are the strength of the military, not just the serving member. If you've been around a military family, you'll know that it's, it's when the spouse is away that's when the roof leaks, the car breaks down, the hot water tank goes, children get sick. <laughs> Always. You can almost mark your calendar on it. It's the friends, families, neighbors, the local merchants, the local tradesmen and repairmen that make these separations livable. Communities like Colwood show such strength and kindness and makes, make this such a great place to live. I wish the mayor and the council the best of luck in their new terms of office. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. I apologize for the oversight, but thank you for your service and for being here. So now the mayor is going to get up and he's going to come forward and he is going to um, ask the uh, outgoing members of council to come forward and be recognized for their years of service. So uh, Mayor Hamilton, Councilors Chong, Nault, and Trace are going to come forward and the mayor is going to say a few words and present you with a gift. Um, I'm going to ask if Councillor Nault, Councillor Chong, and Mayor Hamilton, if you'll come over over on this side for me, please. Just have you guys stand right there for me. Thank you. Either way. So uh, I, I just wanted to, number one, just thank them. Um, they, the last four years have been a joy to actually work with the, the three of you, and I very much appreciate it. I've just written a, a couple little notes, and then as a city, we just have a, a small... A token of our appreciation. So, um, unfortunately, Councillor uh, Terry Trace was not able to be here this evening, um, but I did want to acknowledge the four years we worked together. Uh, Terry, Terry focused a lot on the Heritage uh, Commission, the Finance and Administration Committee, and the Chamber of Co Commerce Liaison. Excuse me. Um, Councillor Nault, uh, Jason Nault, uh, Jason was a strong advocate for open and transparent government this last four years. Uh, he shepherded in the new official community plan and worked uh, significantly for that. He worked with Citizens Task Force to refine the urban uh, forest bylaw. He was supportive of sustainable development and growth, and he encouraged the expansion of multi-use trails and transit options within our community. Jason, thank you so much for the last four years. Um, Councillor Nol, or excuse me, Councillor Chong, uh, Loha. Loha, I believe, were you 22? 
when you were first elected. So just imagine what your own life is like between the ages of 22 and 26 and how much change occurs just in your general life. So uh, we were able to witness with uh, Lil Ha as she went through university and when she went through all her challenges of just becoming in her 20s and, and figuring out her career and everything else. It was amazing to watch. Um, Lil Ha was a role model for, uh, for youth involvement in local government. Uh, she was a significant player in that. She was passionate about the nature. She was in active uh, transportation, involved in active transportation and the arts and culture. She was an advocate for the preservation, creation, enhancement of our parks. And uh, she was an amazing cycling enthusiast. Uh, she would come in many a night wet. Uh, and it'd be like, why are you wet? And it's because she chose to ride her bike. And, and she worked very hard to try and figure out, and we actually had a meeting uh, in our first year on council with the provincial government trying to figure out how we were going to address the uh, galloping goose uh, situation and that gap that we have by Whale Road. Uh, we continue to work with the province with that, but, it, but she drove that, um, and we very much appreciate the last four years. Thank you, Loha. And then finally, Mayor Hamilton. Um, Carol has taught me so much in the last seven years. It's been a privilege to work with you, so thank you so much. I thought it was important today that instead of me just talking about some personal traits that I actually shared with, one of the things Carol was really, really good at was that she never took credit herself um, for the accomplishments of our city. She always messaged that this was a group effort. And I thought it was important tonight for this audience to hear all the things under her guidance um, that this city was able to accomplish. So the Col uh, Colwood housing is still the most affordable area in the region within 15 kilometers of Victoria. Um, on her tender, we approved 1,469 apartments. Of that, 696 of those apartments were designated as market rentals. We have 265 townhomes that were built and 508 single family homes. There was 184 units of subsidized affordable housing that was approved through this council and it was partially funded through the Colwood Affordable Housing Fund and through federal and provincial grant fundings supported by the city of Colwood. Um, 60 units of independent living were approved to help address that need of, of aging in our community. Um, there were 123 legal secondary suites which were constructed and secondary suite regulations were streamlined um, so that we were working towards that affordability. Um, we were able to implement a, a wildland, excuse me, we inter eh, a wildland gator vehicle for emergency response with the fire department was also added as well that she helped outfit, well, not personally, but she helped outfit a wild, wild, wildfire and bush fire truck. There, these were just small gestures of, of all the things that she contributed. And what I would like to say is without Carol's leadership and without the last seven years, uh, this, the city would have been harder off. We are much better as a community because of the dedication and work that she provided to all of us. So on behalf of the entire city, Carol. Thank you. If any, we're all done. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so I am. Uh, I'm delivering my speech here tonight. Uh, the reason I'm delivering my speech here tonight is I have a, a much better ability to, uh, to talk for some reason when I'm standing versus when I'm sitting, and I didn't want to sit at that chair. But don't worry, Council, I'm not going to come to the podium every time I have something to say, just, just this evening. Um, the warmest of welcomes from our entire Council to all of you. Thank you for attending this evening. It, uh, it means a lot to us um, because it demonstrates to us that our community believes in what this council is about to do. Um, 
I'd like to thank the honored guests for attending this evening. I'd like to uh, welcome our staff, our neighbors, our family, and our friends. Um, you heard already, we, and we already spoke a little bit about uh, remembrance as well. I wanted to make a special point of acknowledging um, um, Remembrance Day is coming. It's, it impacts all of us, and I feel it's, uh, incredibly fortunate that I'm able to stand here this evening and, and really represent what democracy is. My great-grandfather died in World War I uh, by a German bayonet. Um, my my father-in-law, who just passed away, um, was recruited at a high school um, to go into the military, and uh, we, we have uh, an incredible debt that we owe the generations before us, and I am so thankful for that. I also want to take a, a minute to congratulate not only the councillors who are sitting before you, but all of those who put their name forward. Um, it, it, there's, a, there's a level of braveness to do that. To put yourself effort out and to make that effort um, takes a lot of risk and it takes a lot of uh, ability to, to understand that, that it's more than just about yourself, that, that you are truly trying to represent the community. And I appreciate each and every person who, who chose to be part of that democratic process. So I would like to celebrate that with all of you. Um, I also just wanted to offer a few brief th this, uh, remarks this evening, so don't worry, it's not, I'm not going to be more than two or three minutes. But I, first of all, I want to speak to you, the community. We, Colwood, are a growing community. We will be challenged with growing pains as we transition from being a rural community to a vibrant urban community. And understand that this is our long-term vision for the city, not a short-term vision. That there is going to be a lot of work that's going to take, and it won't just be this council, but it will be several councils as we move forward. Um, I've personally spoken about the necessity for, to grow our commercial base, to bring jobs into our community, and to create affordability. It's important to understand that these priorities have their consequences as well. To build out a commercial base means shovels in the ground. It means construction, and it means those negative things that come with construction. Jobs in our community means that our community becomes more desirable. It's a place to live, which doesn't address the issue of affordability. It actually works in face of affordability. And so we will struggle as we try and find that equilibrium and balance so that we can build out the healthiest and strongest community that we have. And these are some of the challenges that lie before this council. As well, once elected as a council, it also becomes important that as a councillors, we represent all of the community and not just those who supported us during the election process. So that as we move forward in this next four years, we need to be conscious of those who do not share our opinion on everything. And that that doesn't necessarily mean we're right or they're wrong or vice versa. It means that we need to be open and we need to be listening. And I hope that this council hears that, that it's important to listen as much as it is to talk. Second, I want to take a moment and address the staff and our city employees. The first thing I want to say to each one of you that are here this evening is thank you. Thank you for the efforts and the time and the energies that you have invested into our community. I don't think you hear them enough. I think it's an, uh, that you hear it when things are wrong, but not necessarily when things are right. And so I want to be clear with you that there are is a atmosphere and a feeling within the city that we will be successful and we will be successful because you are here. Finally, I want to focus on my council for a moment and so I, I, I'm going to address just you. I want you to understand that you have taken on a huge responsibility. You've been asked to lead for your community. I ask that you take this sincerely and seriously. You will find a lot of joy in this job, but you will also find the, the odd sleepless night, and you will also need to find a thick skin as you are criticized for the decisions that you make. Let me say this, and my advice to you is this. 
Gather as much information as you can. Make the right choice that you believe is right for this community, and you can do no more. Make that effort, take that time, find the answer that's right. The most inf influential decision makers are not the people who can stand and argue the best. The influential decision makers are those who come in with a decisive decision, but also have the ability to listen and to hear the opposite argument and to be brave enough to say, I'm willing to change my opinion because of that argument. Be open, be brave, be bold. I will challenge you. We are not a caretaker council. We are going to move this community forward and we are going to work very hard. But I expect that you challenge me as much as I challenge you. I embrace this next four years. I look forward to it and thank you for this. And thank you for coming this evening. We have, um, I'm going to move back to uh, my other position and we have a few actual business things that we will need to do. So we'll, we'll do that and then we'll be able to wrap up the rest of our uh, meeting this evening. My counsel is, is phonetically uh, sounding out that terrible word I can't pronounce for me. I'm not even going to try and say it. Um, so uh, uh, the, the things that I um, need to do uh, from a business standpoint is, number one, announce the acting mayor rotation. Uh, so uh, please note uh, this council. From November of 2018 until February of 2019, uh, Councillor Baxter will be the acting mayor uh, when I'm not available. From March 2019 to June will be Councillor Day. From July until October, it will be Councillor Jensen. From November until February, it will be Councillor Kobiaski. Uh, from March, did I say that right? No. Oh. <laughs> made me sound like a Ukrainian. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we got four years for me to get that run right. <laughs> How about I call you Councillor Doug? <laughs> uh, Councillor Logan from March 2020 until June of 2020, and then Councillor Parkinson from July 2020 until October of 2020. Uh, further appointments are required by the City Council at this time, and they must be authorized by Council uh, resolution. So as Mayor, I propose the following, that the Capital Regional District Board representatives be uh, Mayor Martin as the CRD board uh, director and Councillor Doug <laughs> as CRD board alt alternate. Thank you. Moved by Councillor uh, Baxter, Second. seconded by Councillor Jensen. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. That the Capital Regional District Climate Action Intermunicipal Task Force representative be Councillor Baxter who will serve as a four-year term commencing January 1st, 2019, expiring uh, December 31st, 2022. I moved by Councillor Parkinson, second by, by Councillor Doug. Uh, Kobe, help me. Kobe Aski. Kobe Aski. Kobe oh. <laughs> Councillor Doug. Doug, sounds good. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? It's going to be a long four years, people. Uh, that the CRD Emergency uh, Service Telecommunication uh, Crest representative be Councillor Logan as director and Mayor Martin as the delegate to the annual general meeting. Um, moved by Councillor Day. Seconded. Second. Thank you. Seconded by Councillor Logan. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, that, the, that the Greater Victoria Labor Relations Association representative be Councillor Parkinson as director, Councillor Kobiaski, 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 <laughs> Councillor Doug, 
as alternate. I don't know why. You know, I get certain words, and I, I just can't do it. And then uh, Mayor Martin as the delegate for the annual general meeting. Thank you. Uh, seconded by, yeah, we got it by Councillor uh, Baxter. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. And then finally, uh, just uh, for information purposes, that the Greater Victoria Public Library representative will be Mayor Martin until January 1st, which will uh, create a new term at the library, and that will be uh, um, uh, spoken about later in, in a future council meeting. Um, as well, um, I have spoken to our CAO uh, to present to our council in the weeks to come uh, to forward a review of the committee structure and that, the, that a number of city and outside agencies, boards, commissions, and community appointments will be uh, addressed in this report uh, that will be presented to council in the next, uh, before the end of 2018 um, for an impl implementation in early 2019. Finally, the last thing we need to do uh, this evening is, um, excuse me, uh, 9.1, which is uh, a, a motion to receive the 2018 municipal election for officers of mayor and council. Thank you. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Uh, Thank you all for attending this evening. We have snacks, we have food, we have all sorts of opportunities. I know the council would love to sit and stay and talk, so please, uh, please stay. And uh, I need a motion to adjourn. Move adjournment. Thank you, Councillor Logan. That's a shock. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you, everybody.